Hello and welcome to the Delphi Training Series brought to you by 3dbuzz.com. My name's Buzz. And I'm Logan. This will be our first supplemental video that we'll be adding into the Delphi Training Classroom. The goal of this video is to give you guys a sneak peek into what we've been doing with the simple MP3 player project. Now, we plan to create videos showing you guys how to write each and every feature that we're about to demonstrate. But there's a catch. This is an important catch, too. Interest is required. That's right. We have to have enough interest from you guys, the members of 3D Buzz, in order for us to do this. If there's not enough interest, that's cool. What we'll do is we'll finish up all of the features that we showed you guys in episode number four, and then we'll move on to a new project. Cool enough. Okay, now with that said, let's go ahead and get started. Think back to episode four. When I first introduced the basic MP3 player, I had mentioned that I wanted to add some features that weren't normally found in MP3 players. I mean, after all, there are only hundreds of MP3 players out there. What I wanted to do is I wanted to make our player musician-friendly. To be more precise, I said I wanted to make it guitarist-friendly because I like to play guitar, and I'd like to have an MP3 player that would go along nicely with my practice sessions. So if you guys recall, I had showed you this little slider bar down here, and this slider bar allowed us to control the speed of a song. We could slow it down, we could speed it up. But there was a problem with it, and that problem was it would make the pitch change so your song would quickly become out of tune with your guitar. Now, this was a lot of fun, but it wasn't very useful to us as musicians in order to practice along with a song. So we have gone in and added several new things, as you see here. Now, with that said, let me go ahead and point this out. When I say musician, if you're a bassist, if you're a keyboardist, a vocalist, it doesn't matter. As long as you're wanting to play an instrument or sing along with a song, this application will work fantastic with you. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. Here we go. The first ever VTM by 3D Buzz covering a 3D Buzz application. Kind of weird, huh, Logan? Now, you'll notice there's two new tabs that appear that were not on the original user interface that was shown to you guys in episode four. We've got the practice workshop and we've got the practice statistics. Now, the way this works is you go in here and you select whichever song it is that you're going to work with. So let's say I want to select this song right here. With the song selected, now I can come over here to the practice workshop. Whoa. Now we have a lot of features to talk about. The first thing is tuning. Now, when working with a song, you may find yourself needing to retune your, well, whatever it is you're playing, your guitar in this particular case, to match the song. Well, that can be a bit of a pain if you're working with a series of songs that, let's say you've got one song that's a whole step down, another song that's a half step down. That would just be a pain retuning over and over and over. And if you don't happen to have multiple guitars laying around all with different tuning, then, yeah, you're wasting a lot of time. So what you can do here is you can use this tuning section to tune the song to you. And what we're doing is we're simply stepping up or stepping down semitones. That's up a semitone, up two semitones. You get the idea. What's really nice, though, is let's say with this particular song, I want to go up one semitone, and now the song is in tune with my guitar. If we close the application and come back into it later, check this out. So we're back into the application, back into the song, come back over to the practice workshop. It remembers your last setting. So everything that you do inside this application is remembered, and that is very convenient. So once we have taken a song and we've tuned it to the guitar or whatever instrument it is you're playing, we can now move down to the looping section. Ah, something big and fancy for our beginner Delphi programmers. But we are going to make this as simple as possible. Yes, this is a waveform of our MP3 file. So we're going to show you guys how to take an MP3 stream, sample it, and construct a wave file from it, or a waveform from it. And there's a lot of neat things that we can do with this waveform, and it all is a means to an end, and that end is a loop that you can practice with. Now, we do have things like a time bar that you can drag back and forth, you'll notice, or a time slider. You'll notice that as we drag our little time slider back and forth that our track bar up here is moving back and forth in sync with it. That's to be expected. Now let's go ahead and play and show you that we can jump while it's playing through different parts of the song. In order to do this, I'm going to grab some headphones and kind of put them on. Now here's the problem with having these headphones on. We now have the audio routed to where it's being recorded through the computer. That's nice. 
But here's the problem with it. It means when I hear the audio, I'm also hearing myself talk, but it's delayed behind what I'm actually saying. So that can be confusing quickly. So while I am listening to music play, I will be somewhat quiet so that I don't start talking slow like this. All right, so let's go ahead and hit play. All right, so we can hear some music play. Now, jump, jump, jump. Very convenient. Now, I'm going to start using Spacebar, which is a new hotkey that we've added in to start playing and stop playing. Uh, a lot of you guys out there that have worked with various uh, editors or maybe very familiar with using the space bar to start and stop uh, playback. So we went ahead and added it into here. Now, here's our waveform. That's fine and dandy, but how is this going to be helpful for us? Well, remember I said it's a means to an end, and that end is creating a loop that we can practice along with. This particular song right here is a song that my daughter wants me to learn to play. <laughs> right. Maybe sometime in the far future because it's quite an advanced song but let's say that i wanted to work on a part of the solo well let's find where that solo is let's come over here and it's going to start somewhere right after this little bit of a, a slow part so let me back up and hit spacebar okay so let's say i want to work on that right there what i can do with this little waveform area is i can come in here mark a starting area come over to my keyboard and i can hit the open square bracket think and that's going to mark a start point for my loop. Now I'm just going to pull over to a random location somewhere right there. And I'm going to hit the closing square bracket on my keyboard. And that is going to mark the end of my loop. So what I've got now is a section that is actually going to loop through as I play through it. So if I put my uh, little time slider here close to the end of the marked region and hit the space bar, watch how it's going to loop. Very nice. Now, we've also added in the ability to zoom into a marked region of the waveform. So I'm going to hit the plus key on my keyboard. And we have now zoomed into that area. So if I hit the semicolon key, that's going to tell it to go to start for what is currently selected. So semicolon. Now we've gone to the start right here. Let's hit space bar. Now, to be honest with you, that's a little bit too much for me to work with at one time. So what I want to do is at the very beginning, you'll notice it plays for just a second. Uh, the first series of notes, it goes into a high note, then it starts in another sequence of notes. Let's go ahead and focus on just those first few notes. So let's find that area real quick. So right about where I'm at right now, so I can do this. I can just mark someplace close to it, hit the closing square bracket again. So now we have zoomed in even further. You'll notice with us zoomed in, we now auto-zoom. So it keeps zooming as we get closer or further out in our selection. So let's play this. That's actually pretty close, but I can come in here just to demonstrate this. If I wanted to, I can use my comma to back up and my period to go forward and mark a new area. And you'll notice how it automatically scales that area to fit into our waveform viewing panel right here. So let's go ahead and hit spacebar. All right, so let's say that's pretty good right there. As a matter of fact, I might want to add just a little bit more to that. So we'll jump to here, take one more step, mark the region, play it. Perfect. Now I'm going to go ahead and give this loop a name. So let's call it something like solo underscore one. And I hit enter. Now check this out. I can hit the minus key to jump back out. There's the marked region. I can hit the plus key to jump back in. I can also jump back out, just hit reset, reselects the entire song. So now I can play from anywhere within the song. And if I want to get back to my area, jump right back in. There it is. Plus key zooms it back out. Very convenient. Let's go ahead and step back out, close the application and demonstrate that we are indeed saving that information out. Let's rerun the simple MP3 player. That's not quite so simple anymore, huh, Logan? And with our song selected, we'll come over here to the practice workshop. There it is. Let's select it. And there's our little region. Let's go ahead and hit the plus key to focus in on it. And that's what we were looking for. And, of course, we are still holding the tuning of the song to our guitar or whatever instrument it is you're playing. So very convenient. You'll notice now if I come over to the playlist and pick another song, I've already got several different sections set up for it. So in this case, if I wanted to work on, let's say, perhaps the rhythm. And maybe even zoom in while it's playing.
And I can go to, like, let's say, part of the solo. Or another part. Or even jump back over here to another song. Let's go to Van Halen's Eruption. Good stuff there. And we can come in here to one of the tapping exercises. And it'll loop. Zoom in. And zoom out. So very nice stuff. So you can see how already this is extremely convenient to a musician marking off an area that they're trying to learn. But wait, we've gone even further. Outside of being able to set up your loops, you can now jump down here to the speed training section and you'll see we've got all sorts of features down here. All of this allows you to basically work with a selected loop or the entire song and if you're interested, you can record statistics about your playing so that you can see how long you've worked with a song. But let's take a look at the features we have available. The first thing we have is the ability to control the speed of the song without changing the pitch of the song. And this is very important because if you want to slow the song down, there's nothing more frustrating in the world than to have the pitch change and it's no longer in tune with whatever instrument you're playing. Well, we have devised a way that we can slow the song down without it changing the pitch. So this tapping exercise, for instance, let's go ahead and hit spacebar and slow it down. And more. And more. And more. You can see where that can be really convenient. Let's jump back over here, come back into the extreme song, and let's come back down to the rhythm section. And I can click over here to reset my speed back to 100%. So here's the rhythm section. Let's go ahead and just zoom in on it. Now, whew, pretty fast. But what does it sound like when slowed down to, let's say, something like 70% or 71%? much more manageable for someone who's trying to learn this complex piece. And this works great with all of the stuff. Now, of course, you can do other things with this, which we'll talk about in just a minute, which is pretty creative with the features that have been set up in front of you. Now, let's go ahead and start focusing. Now that we've taken a look at our speed section, let's go ahead and look at start and some of the options that come with it. Start, this gets into us having the ability to record what it is we are doing. With this particular song right now, we have got 56 seconds invested in recorded time. If we come over here to the practice statistics area, check this out. We have a total of 56 seconds invested in practicing this particular song. We've got five different records that have been recorded. Now, when a record is recorded, there are several different ways we can go about recording the record. We can play a simple loop from a selection or the entire song or we can do speed training. Now with the simple loop, what's gonna happen is it's gonna loop that particular part with the speed that you currently have set. So here it is. It's playing at 72%. Now if I want to, I can come over here to record stats. Now I can hit the start button. It starts back over and now it's playing at 72% and we are working on Solo example, or excuse me, solo exercise one, my total time continues to go up, my session times come alive, and my last played, which is going to stop at 20 seconds, I'll stop it there. All right, so we've got 20 seconds on it. So let's go ahead and come over here to our practice statistics. And on practice statistics now, we've got 20 seconds. We don't have any file associated. We'll talk about that in a second. We recorded a tempo of 72% of the original 100%, and we were working on solo exercise one. And we now have six records, and we've now got, instead of 56 seconds, a total of one minute and 16 seconds invested with this song. Again, if I close the application, relaunch the application, come back in here, select that particular song, come back over here to practice statistics. It's still at a minute and 16 seconds, our six records, and here is the last piece that we were just doing. Very, very convenient 
to someone who wants to keep track of how much they've worked with a particular song. And if you put 5, 6, 15, 20, 60 songs in there, it's really nice to see which songs you've put a lot of effort into and which songs need more effort. But wait, we've added even more. So now with just a simple loop, it's just going to play whatever loop or full song you've got selected up here at the speed in which you set. We also have speed training, and what speed training is going to do is it's going to give us a starting tempo, an ending tempo, and how much we want to increase by each time through the loops. Let me see. Do I have something short set up here? That's pretty short. Let me see how long that sounds. All right. Now I can take that and say, let's start out maybe at 50%, and I want to go up to 100%. And I want to record this statistic, and let's go ahead and play it for a minute. Notice how that just went up. And again. So let's just say we make it up to about 55%. Here it comes. And we'll, we'll wait for 30 seconds. So 56, 30 seconds. Let's stop it. Well, actually, it hit 31. Let's come back over here to statistics again, and there's a new one. We now have a minute 40 second, excuse me, a minute and 47 seconds invested in this song. We started at 50% on solo exercise two, and we made it all the way up to 56%. And again, we didn't record any file. We practiced this loop for 31 seconds total, which is what we just saw a second ago. And again, all of this stuff is being logged to a file. So definitely, definitely cool stuff. So you can see how this can be very useful as this continues to increase speed as we work our way up to 100%. And let's say we only get up to about 80% and we find that that's kind of our, you know, that's, that's our, our cap, if you will. Then we can just go back in here and practice and say, let's take our setting here and move it up to 81% and practice that until we get it smooth. Then maybe 82, 83, 85, whatever, until we start getting smooth. Then we can come back down here and start working with speed training again. It's just very convenient being able to have this thing automatically increase the tempo each time it passes through a particular loop. So very good stuff. So that's how selection, dealing with the song, simple loop or speed training works. We also see how we can use the speed training speed bar and what percent we're running at and a simple click to reset it back to 100%. Ah, no instrument center would be complete without a metronome built in. And of course we have one so we can set it over to metronome and it disables simple loop and speed training. And we now have the ability to come in here and turn on a metronome. So we have a click sound, a hi-hat sound and a snare sound. I can control how many beats per minute. So let's say instead of doing 100, I want to practice something a little more Brisk, let's do 180, turn that on. We can control the volume. So you can see quickly, let me do that again with a snare, something I know you guys will hear. Very nice, and you can also change it while it's running too. So while it's running, let's change this to 90. Very, very handy. This works with the recorded stats as well. Check this out. Let's say I wanted to practice at 180 and turn it on. So it's doing its thing. Now I can come over here and say start recording. Now I can start practicing. I'm playing. My total time's going up. I'll turn this down for you guys. My total time's going up. My session's going up. My last play's going up. So let's say about 12 seconds. Okay, now watch this. Let's turn this off. If I come over here to my practice statistics now, look at this. This one didn't have a start and end tempo. Instead, it had a beats per minute, so we know that we were using the metronome. Again, no file's been recorded and no loop is associated, so I'm just freeforming with a metronome. That's all. So you can see how my statistics changed there to let me know what it was that I was doing. Now let's go ahead and jump back over here to our practice workshop again and talk about the record audio. 
You'll notice that with record stats disabled or turned off, that our record audio has been disabled. We can't check this. If we're going to record stats, if you won't, you can take your guitar, keyboard, whatever, and you can run it into your line in or microphone in on your computer, and you can record yourself playing. So if your sound card is set up to not record what it hears internally, like wave files and things coming in online in, <clears throat> excuse me, let's say it's recording only what comes in online in or on microphone, then you can actually play along with a song or with a loop and have it record you, but then once you're done, play last becomes enabled and you can go back and listen to what just you sounded like without the song. This is really helpful. It's been really helpful to me. I've been playing with it for the last couple of days because I'll practice along with a song and it sounds great. And then after the song's done, I'll stop it. I'll come over here and hit play last and I sound like crap. And I'm like, well, I guess I need to put a little bit more time into that. What's really nice is the play last is just a quick feature allowing you to get to the last thing you just recorded. But over here, you'll notice that you have a file section, and it tells you if you have recorded audio with something. So you can always come back into here, double-click, and it'll start playing up here. So let's go ahead and show you how each of these things work. I'll come back over here. Let's say that I am playing... Let's come over here to... Yeah, that'll work. Ah, uh, notice how that just said generating waveform? It's another interesting thing to point out real quick. There's so many features here. It's actually uh, getting to the point where it's easy to forget to mention something. We are caching these waveforms. How cool is that? Which means after we go through a complete song and we sampled everything and constructed a waveform for you, we sample, or excuse me, we cache that out to a file so that we can then get back into it quickly. So as you can see here, real fast, doesn't say anything. If I was to jump over here into a cache folder that we have, here is a cache that we generate for each song. So if I want to, let's go ahead and take this one out. So I'll shift delete it real quick. So it's gone. Come back up here, back over here. If I come into this song, nice and fast, no generating waveform. Come back to playlist, select this song, watch. Generating waveform. So now we have it, there's your file. And now, again, we can quickly go back through this. So it just speeds the entire process up. So I wanted to show that to you real quick since I saw generating waveform just kind of sneak in there real fast. So yet again, one more thing that you guys get to learn how to do, which is really, really neat stuff. All right, so let's say in this song here, I'm working on the ever so cool intro. So here's the intro. And let's zoom in. All right, now, now I want to record the statistic and the audio with it. Now, right now, we've got our sound card set up to just record what it hears, which means it's going to record just this sound because at the and us talking, too, instead of a guitar, because I don't have a guitar in here at the video toaster, which is where we do our VTM recording. So let's go ahead and hit start and pretend we had a guitar and see if the audio is indeed uh, grabbed. So I'm going to go back to selection. We'll just do simple loop. And it's just going to read the 100%. We can go ahead and set this back to 100% in case we do our speed training back. So it doesn't really matter which one. And we're recording stats. We're recording audio. And we've never invested any time practicing with this song. We've only set up a loop. So let's go ahead. And you'll notice that means we also have no statistics over here. Let's record it. Of course, I'm sure I'm going to go ahead and hit stop that you guys notice that I have the entire thing selected, but that's okay. We've got six seconds involved, or uh, practiced, if you will. Let's notice play last, just enabled. So now we can actually play this. Watch what happens to our waveform. Of course, I'm sure I'm going to go ahead and hit stop. Kind of like deja vu, huh? Really freaky. And we can come in here and scrub through it in the whole nine yards, which is good stuff. So I'll go ahead and hit close on this. So now play last is disabled. We need to record again if we want to come back in here and practice this or whatever. But here's what I want to show you. Let's go over here to practice statistics now. Now we have that six second piece that we just did. did and there is a file now associated with this record. So I can double click it. Of course, I'm sure I'm going to go ahead and hit stop. Very nice. Very, very nice. So you can see how this stuff is, is just really handy. 
So let's go ahead and jump back over into, let's see, where do I want to pick on? Any place particular? So you guys have seen, let's just think, anything else we need to mention, Logan? We've shown them how to do statistics. You can also come in here and delete stuff out. So let's say I didn't want this guy right here. I can just simply hit delete. Do you want to delete the entry? Yeah, I didn't want that one. And our time, everything updated over here. So that's good. This time still stays at the full time invested with this song. This time is showing us the time that we have for all of our records total. So that's kind of convenient. As a matter of fact, let's talk a little bit more about what we see down here. The last thing we practice is our last played. So if we stay in a loop and practice this loop over and over and over and over and over, we can see for how long we practiced it for. The session is started when we come from the playlist over into the workshop area with a particular song. That is, if we want to work with this song, we know we're going to set a goal for ourselves. I want to work with this song for 30 minutes. I can simply come over to this tab. Session starts out at zero. I stay on this tab, do all my playing, and when this hits 30 minutes, I'm done. Simple enough. And then, of course, this information isn't saved for us. It's just for us to know how long we've been working with it in this particular session. The total time will still be saved, and this will also increment by 30 minutes because we've been in there for 30 minutes. So that's the difference between total time and session. Session's just for you to know how long you've been working with that song on this particular session. All right, Logan, just kind of looking around the screen. Is there anything else we need to mention? I think that's got it. Um, I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on I mean, on there's here. little niceties. If you um, glanced at the top when we were playing the recorded file, it was actually an MP3 file as well. Uh, to conserve hard drive space, we have it set up so that when you record your own incoming sound, it gets recorded to MP3, so you're not wasting hard drive space with huge WAV files. And that's, and that's a really good thing you mentioned that, too, because that's cool stuff. We're going to show them how they can work with some of the plugins that are available for bass and how to implement code accessing functions inside those plugins and having those functions work with the base library. Really powerful stuff. And that is going to be used to actually write and encode or encode and write to a file, an MP3 file, as you're actually practicing when you've got the record audio checked. Right, you'll notice there was no delay after recording. It didn't have a final pass. It was able to generate the MP3 file on the fly. Exactly. So you guys are going to learn how to do that. There's so much stuff that you're going to learn how to do if we create the videos for the practice workshop and practice statistics section. And again, it's only if you guys are interested. If you're not interested, then that's cool. We've got this application exactly how I need it for my daily practice with the guitar, and we'll move on to another application. So we need to hear from you guys. Are you interested in learning how to do all of this? Because there's a lot of crazy stuff in here with the ability to you know, run a, a track bar back and forth like this, to be able to come in and mark particular areas, to zoom into those areas, to re clip and resume on the fly to zoom back out to reset to save to control speed to control tuning control everything i mean it's all right here at your fingertips all right with that all being said this is going to conclude the first vtm 3d buzz has ever done on a 3d buzz written application guys that's going to wrap it up for the supplemental video in the delphi training series thank you very much for joining and let us know what you think over in the forums at 3dbuzz.com you guys take care.